Because it was not from Earth. Um, I don't know how else to explain it. My body was on fire with love and joy and bliss and ecstasy. And the realm that I was in felt like a Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel and hello if you're new. My name is Andrea Johnson and I am your spiritual inspiration here to inspire, empower, and teach you how to master your energy. Welcome to the Good Vibe Tribe. Welcome to Cautious Coffee Talks where we discuss topics to expand our consciousness and improve our lives. Let's get into some spiritual inspiration today. Guys, I thought today's video would be a fun one to create or remake one that I made almost a year ago on things that I wish I knew before having a spiritual awakening. So let's dive into the first one, which is life has no meaning other than what you give it. And many of you probably have heard this saying before. I heard it originally from Daryl Anka, I think is his name. He channels Bashar. It wasn't until I really started working in psychic development and energy work and having experiences myself where I was separating out my consciousness from the mind, I call it the monkey mind, and understanding or literally seeing, I guess you wanna say with my consciousness, how my thoughts and emotions created my reality. And I can sit here and I can say this to you guys, but there is a different level of conscious expansion that this hits differently when you truly come to realize that everything is taken in from your own perception and the stories that you tell yourself in your mind really do play your reality out. It is absolutely crazy. Needless to say, it's really important to master your mind and your emotions because if you can take control of your thoughts, meaning choosing, consciously choosing which thoughts that you want to think or which thoughts that you want to act upon in your reality and then pairing with an emotion, you become a conscious creator. And that is exactly what he is saying when he's talking about life has no meaning other than what you give it because ultimately guys, life is just happening. It's just happening all around us and the only really thing that you truly know exists is your consciousness because you know you exist. Everything else around you is out of your control and it's an illusion essentially, even to go as deep as it's a hologram of energy pretty much. And the things that you tell yourself are happening in your external world is going to be what you feel on the inside. You're assigning logic and meaning to everything in your world. So if you can take control of your thoughts and your emotions, you can create the reality of your dreams. Easier said than done, I know guys, that we all have the same monkey mind, essentially. No human escapes. Um, the workings of a human mind or brain. We are all wired to be this way. So this brings me to my next point, guys, is the voice in your mind will always run. It will always be talking to you. Now, some people don't actually have that voice in their head. They don't hear themselves speaking. But essentially, most of us uh, all have a voice that we hear as ourselves basically talking to ourselves, narrating our life, and we call it the narrator. And it will always run, it will always tell stories, and the stories will only be true if you believe that they are true, and that creates your reality and your perception of the world. <laughs> it doesn't mean necessarily that that voice is always true, it's just your level of belief or faith that you give it. And that is like anything else in your external world as well too, whatever you believe is what you give power to, it's what you give your energy to. So it's the same thing in your mind. Essentially what I'm trying to say is if you don't like the way that voice is speaking to you or if you don't like certain thoughts that you are having, you have the power to change it. Now, a lot of people don't understand that they have the power to change it, but you do. Not always easy, but it just takes some work. It takes holistic healing. It can 
take work like therapy, meditation, energy work, movement, breath work. These are all things to reprogram that voice inside your mind. And this further leads me to my next one is your thoughts dictate your feelings, which then dictate your actions. So dependent upon how that voice is making you feel will depend upon what you do in your reality. So if something doesn't feel good for you, you have to change the way that you're thinking or talking to yourself. And we call this a mind reframe. So if you're thinking a certain thought and it's not producing a very good feeling, this in spiritual terms means that it is not in alignment with your soul because soul is the frequency of love or god is love essentially so anything that doesn't feel like love means that there is some form of misalignment um, with either your thoughts or your emotions so the thoughts that you are thinking are not in alignment with love and so therefore that is just your sign to think higher thoughts so you might be thinking like, oh, I'm a failure, I can't do this, or this isn't meant for me, and then that doesn't feel very good for you, right? So that is just your soul coming through to communicate with you that, hey, that thought's a lie, that's not true, that doesn't feel good, let's get back in touch with love, let's think a higher thought of, oh, I'm just learning and this is just part of the process of growth. It doesn't mean that something's not meant for me. It just means that I'm just getting better and better and eventually what I want will come to fruition. Eventually I will learn what I need to learn to be able to level up. You know, it's something of that nature and that thought feels better than thinking that I'm a failure. So then we can produce actions from this state of being, meaning this frequency and the way that we are thinking and feeling. If you guys don't catch the gist already, a lot of science and psychology of what we are learning now in modern day science is very heavily tied into the psyche or the soul or spirituality. They are essentially one and the same. And I love how science is now explaining these things. So one of the hardest lessons I feel like I've had to learn is understanding what the most important thing that you will ever have in your life beside yourself is the relationships that you make with people. This is probably one of the biggest meanings to life other than the experience of the soul and discovering and experiencing the human experience. Um, but it's the relationships and the connections that you make with other people. And they are honestly our greatest teachers. They tell us so much about ourselves because they mirror back to us our strengths and our weaknesses or our lessons, if you want to call it that. You start to understand as you go through life that it's the connections that you have with other people that are deep and meaningful and create some of the most um, fulfilling aspects of life is the human connection with others and providing value for other people on a soul level, meaning you genuinely are wanting to help somebody else uh, without any kind of personal gain. You are just purely wanting to better somebody else's life. You're purely wanting to make connections with other people for the sake of love and expansion with others. So this one thought alone really changed my perspective and the way of which I saw relationships. And it was basically when you get to the end of your life or even to say that when you pass, what do you want people to remember you by? And it's going to be the people who you made the biggest connections with or the biggest impacts in their life with. And that's not necessarily to say like, oh, to make a huge impact in people's lives, I need to be like, um, you know, famous and like help a bunch of people and all this stuff like that to feel worthy. And that's not what I'm saying here. You know, it's not necessarily how many people you help. It's who you show up for day in and day out and how you treat people in your daily life. That is truly what really matters at the end of the day is how you show up for them and what impact that you can make upon their life. How can you help somebody be a better person, right? How can you help them achieve their goals, right? People don't remember what you say or necessarily what you've even done or do. They remember how you make them feel, right? 
So how can you show up and help somebody feel loved? How can you show up for somebody and help them feel safe, help them feel supported, help them feel like they matter? So my next one that I realized was that there is no wrong path to take. And this is because God is in every single path. There is never not a time that you are alone in your life because the mere fact that you exist means you are always connected to a greater aspect of yourself and are always guided into it. And I, I've thought of this and I've had to like explain this to certain clients, especially with trying to make big life decisions. Um, or people not understanding, you know, what direction to take in their life or what they're meant to do or what option to take. And they're honestly paralyzed by fear. And I've been there too, guys, of, you know, asking the heavens of what do I do? Like, where do I go? Where are you, God? You know, like, where are you? Why can't you give me a sign or direction? And the answer that I got in this was so beautiful. And it was that... I am both directions. I am in every single piece of your life. So therefore you should know no matter what path you choose, I walk beside you. So therefore there is no wrong path. And then I was like, shit. I honestly, I like teared up. I was, I, it, that came to me in meditation the other day. So anyway, I thought somebody needed to hear that today. Which brings me to my next point is life is not meant to be figured out. It's meant to be experienced. And uh, the more I go on throughout my life and the more people that I talk to, you never fully have it figured out. You just get better at dealing with life and circumstances. You get more mature, honestly, or more emotionally mature, and you start trusting the process a little bit more. You start trusting yourself. And I think this comes with time and experience and age. Um, honestly, they truly say that you find God in wisdom. I 100% believe that. I feel like God is wisdom <laughs> and I feel like this just comes with life and really trying to understand yourself and understand reality around you. And then I think as we get older and we experience more, the less we care, honestly, <laughs> because you probably have cared so much up to a certain point and as and you're like f it you know this hasn't worked out for me yet so let's just try not caring and let's just believe in magic and m crystals and woo woo shit we'll give that a try right i'm just kidding uh, this is like the last resort here but in all honesty guys life is truly i feel like meant to be enjoyed it is not meant to be hard and if you you really come into this knowing whenever you understand your mind and you understand how the voice creates everything in your life, if you can shift it to that of a better voice, everything in your external world changes. And then you realize that, holy shit, I was making all this stress and anxiety up. I'm really okay. <laughs> um, and you realize you made things a whole F ton harder than what they should have been. But this experience is meant to be enjoyed. It's, I feel like an experience of the soul and self-discovery. And ultimately, you know, the soul has an agenda that it came here to do and it's going to do it, <laughs> you know, stop trying to control it and just sit back, enjoy the ride. Which brings me to my next lesson is the more, you know, the less, you know. And I've heard this quite a bit in the spiritual community. Uh, I've understood it to a certain level, but I've definitely spiraled around and circled back to this thought and understood it on a deeper level, which is the more you think you know, you honestly box yourself into a reality of beliefs because a belief is a level of energy. It, it, it creates some form of a box in your world, right? So it's even to say, if you believe in spirituality, you believe in it. Or if you believe that you are an aspect of God, you believe in it. If you believe in Christianity and that, you know, set of rules, that creates your reality in the way you live your life, right? 
or you can even go into this as the paradox theory of if you don't trust yourself in something, you're believing that you're not trustworthy in something, right? So it's no matter what you, you believe, like it, it's going to be reflected back to you. So the more that you think you know something is the level of belief you have in some kind of a thought or an idea, and it will create your reality until one day you might outgrow that or you might never outgrow it and stay stuck in it and therefore kind of just stay stuck in the same reality. So I think that the best approach for this is to approach life with an open mind, honestly, and an open heart and to be able to discern um, knowledge based upon your experience, how it resonates with you, if it feels authentic for you or not, or in alignment with your soul. Um, I wouldn't just take anything that somebody gives you as truth until you discern it for yourself. Um, and always be open to learning. Don't ever hold on to something as like the truth ultimately as the end all be all. I really think that's where people stop growing is when they think that they understand and know everything and then they stop experiencing new things or becoming open to creative endeavors or ideas. And as we know, that is just the nature of our universe. That's the nature of spirit is it likes to create, it likes to experience, it likes to expand. And when you hold a belief around something, you're limiting yourself to something even if in the moment a belief serves you, right? So be willing to let it go whenever the time is needed. Which brings me to my next point, which is a little bit of a paradox, is you already know everything. You truly do. Um, most of the time, humans just need to be reminded and it could because we forget. And this is where you'll see information repeated so many times in so many different ways on the internet. And you're like, oh yeah, I knew that. I remember that. Or you'll hear something and it will hit you differently and your perception will shift over it. But it's something you've heard before. You've just now grown in experience. And so maybe that thought or that belief, you understand it on a deeper level, right? And this is just part of evolution, I feel like, as human beings. You're always going to circle around back to what you thought you knew before, but it, you will understand it on a deeper level based upon your level of growth and experience in the world. One of the biggest ones that I really feel like has helped me, and this has come more from like my study with like psychology and the workings of the mind and emotions, which is happiness is a state of being, which means it's fleeting. Just because you don't feel happy today doesn't mean something's wrong. It doesn't mean to read into it or overanalyze. It just is, right? So it's not to say that anything is wrong and that we're always meant to be happy. I know for me, if I've felt like any kind of discomfort or if I felt like, you know, I'm not happy, like what the heck is going on in my life? Like what I don't understand. There should be no reason why I'm not happy. Um, it just, some days are just like that guys. And it, it's just not something to like throw your arms up and be like, oh shit, you know, I'm going through something. Obviously let's tell myself a story on why I'm not happy to try and figure it out. Cause that's how the mind works. But, uh, it's just coming to a self acceptance of I'm not happy. What can I do about it? Let me pull out some tools in my tool belt and try to make myself feel better. And what I mean by that is what I do is if I want to move energy in my body that I don't like, I move. I move energy through the body, which is one of the best ways to actually clear the mind and to feel better is to actually one, do physical movement, get up, go exercise, release some endorphins, do some yoga it is a body science to move energy to get things shifting or breath work or do some energy work. Those are all very powerful tools that if you understand how to use them, they can help you. And honestly, guys, I think that is the way to this kind of a little off topic, but that is honestly the best way to reprogram your mind, rewire it, get that voice inside your head to shut up if you don't like it is movement through the body. 
that is the best way to reprogram your subconscious because the subconscious is basically inside the body. It's your cells essentially that have this energy or this memories uh, or these memories that you're trying to basically rid yourself of or your programming. So this kind of brings me into my next one, which is what you focus on expands. And this is good or bad. The universe honestly doesn't care. Um, I say doesn't care. It does. It does care about your well-being. Um, we can really get into the really sciencey side behind it, and it can really look like it doesn't. But as we know, guys, law of attraction 101, what you focus on will manifest in your life. We live in an abundant universe, and it will give you exactly what you put out, meaning your thoughts and your emotions, right? It will just keep giving you more of it. So place your focus on what it is that you actually want in your life. And this can be very challenging because that picture isn't always clear for people. Um, we can only come into clarity with the highest thoughts uh, that we think for ourselves or the highest reality that we see for ourselves dependent upon our energy in the moment, right? So it's kind of like you work on yourself and you work on growing and expanding and doing things, experiencing, and that is really where you get the clarity in your life to understand what it is you truly want. You just understand yourself more on who you actually are and removing what is actually not you, right? So it's understanding that this is a process and where you feel out of alignment, where you feel like you're focusing on things that aren't going well for you in your life, that um, you know, you're not seeing the divine aspect in them, the divine purpose and things. Like let's say your relationship for some reason, that you are in a really toxic relationship and you cannot just stop thinking about it. You're placing your attention there, right? On all the things that are wrong in this relationship, all the things that you wish you had. And then it's just reaffirming to you that you don't have those things or that your relationship, there's something wrong. And if you keep putting your focus on the wrongness, that's what will keep manifesting. So you have to, this is where manifest coaching comes in or understanding how mind plays into psychology and all that is placing the focus on what it is you actually want to create. So if you want a loving, better relationship, the relationship of your dreams, you put your focus on that relationship and you get clear on what it is that you actually desire from that relationship. You know, what do you want out of a relationship? Then the person will show up because you have to understand that you also have to become that vibrational match, which is if you put your focus on it, then I feel like naturally that's just kind of what happens with you. The last one that I wanted to remind you guys of is your truth, which is you are essentially all that is. You are connected to the highest always. You are never not alone. You are source. Your consciousness is source. And that was one thing that I learned only through experiences, spiritual experiences um with meditation with energy work it, it came into this knowing and it was through the body that i had experiences with this it's like you have to convince the body of the information for the subconscious to truly accept it i didn't understand it to the aspect that i do today without all those experiences that i've had you truly are it the love that we actually are what we actually are our power we can we've been so heavily conditioned and programmed that we just can't believe that we are this thing and we're it <laughs> um that's the only way that i can just no words do it justice um i forget that there the uh, there's called spiritual amnesia this is what this place has <laughs> Um, earth school, whatever you want to call it. It's designed to do this and it's for a reason and it's a good reason. Life truly is determined on your level of faith that you have in yourself, honestly. And the faith that you have in yourself is the same that you have in spirit because you are it, right? 
Your existence is proof of it. It's just coming into a higher aspect of yourself. I'm not ever quite sure we'll ever get to the fullest aspect of it. In the human experience, there is weight that this body has on our energy, on our soul, to keep us tied here. But I know that I've experienced love that I don't ever believe can be replicated here. I don't believe that's possible because it was not from Earth. Um, I don't know how else to explain it. My body was on fire with love and joy and bliss and ecstasy. And the realm that I was in felt like a child. That's honestly what it felt. I remember even thinking, I'm like, wow, this feels like children. The innocence, the curiosity, the wonderlust. That's the creator's love and outlook that it has for us. It's curious, it wants to experience, it wants to grow, it wants to expand, it wants to play, it wants to love, it wants to be free, it wants to create. That is life. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the messages that I've channeled forth for you today, just to give you a, a returning home, a re-remembering of your truth, or just a positive, upbeat message in case you're having a down day. So I am your spiritual inspiration, meaning in spirit for you, returning you to your purpose and your remembering. So I'm sending you all my light and all my love. We'll see ya.